I don't think I need to talk about 2020 as a year, because we all know that it's been shit. But something that 2020 didn't slack on was the video game releases. There was banger after banger of video games released throughout the entire year, so I wanted to share what I thought was the best. Just know that the games that are showing up on the screen currently are games that I have not played either because of lack of interest or not having the time or money to purchase and play these games. With that being said, let's get this list started. Risk of Rain 2 is the first 3D roguelike game that I have played, and it's pretty damn fun, especially with some friendos. You enter a level, look for the exit. Activating the exit will cause the boss to appear, meaning that you can find the exit, but if you don't want to fight the boss yet, that's fine. Go do some more shit. Like, it doesn't matter. But the difficulty also rises over time, so the enemies may get more difficult the longer that you take. This keeps the game's difficulty alongside you growing in upgrades. My biggest complaint about the game is just starting it. You start out with one character, the Commando, and he is uber boring in my opinion. But each other unlockable character has a very different playstyle that when you unlock them and find your favorites, you'll want to go back for repeated playthroughs until you can finally beat your run and maybe do the insanely hard final boss, which I won't show on the screen. Not gonna lie, I thought this was gonna be a fad like Fall Guys and Among Us. But Phasmophobia is legitimately hilarious, creepy, and fun. The game uses proximity voice chat, so when you explore different parts of the many maps, your ghost hunting crew can't hear you as well if you're walking far away. The radio mitigates this, but also reveals your location during a hunt. You can verbally speak to ghosts to get more clues on them, yelling rude things or curse words will actually tick the ghost off a little bit. And holy shit is this game fun with friendos. In fact, that's my only complaint. It's multiplayer focused, but once you know that, you kind of really don't need any other reason to like get it if you have friends that want to play with you on it and you hear that it's fun and you're interested in it. That's the whole reason to get it, is just to play with your friends. Like, as long as you understand that, not really a big problem. You cannot describe this game in one word, because if you say adorable then you are disregarding the realistic character struggles in writing. But if you say dire, then you aren't regarding the cute creatures in this colorful world. Bug Snacks is silly, but with characters that actually emote. You enter as a reporter on your way to research Lisbert Megafig, who went away with Egabel and some other grumbles to an island full of Bug Snacks. I love the goofy designs for the bug snacks in the game. They are so cute and represent their origins well, just by the types of bugs that they are and the type of food that they combined with. Not only that, they sound so adorable. Catching these bug snacks is never spelled out to you. You are given all of the necessary tools in the game as you play through it to catch certain bug snacks, but they never tell you deliberately how you catch them. You have to figure it out yourself, and it's very rewarding to catch those little creatures. My favorite bug snack is Bunger. A time sink like this isn't always going to blow you away. It'll keep you busy and get your creative uses flowing, but not all the time do time sinks like this just keep you enthralled. Animal Crossing released at the perfect time, when everybody was getting stuck in their homes, not being able to leave and do outside activities. Animal Crossing was a new, simple way to begin doing that from the safety of your own, of your own home. 
You were able to make your island the way you wanted, meeting new villagers was always a blast, finding new things to craft give you more ideas for your island, it was just the perfect time sink in March, but I will say that the tutorials are insanely long, not giving you total freedom for literal days, and in-game days in Animal Crossing are actual days, so you'll just have to stop playing and get back to it at some point. Later down the road, you'll run out of ideas and things to do on your island as well. But hey, Animal Crossing has given me over 100 hours of enjoyment this year. So I think that it deserves to be at least this high on my list, even if I don't think that the game is necessarily fantastic. Another time sink, but this one's different. Genshin Impact is a beautiful game with simplistic yet fun combat based on elements. Basically meaning if you combine wind with fire, make a fire tornado. Basic stuff like that and it's an open world game. But more than that, Genshin Impact has a large world to explore. A large amount of characters, a large amount of quests including character specific quests, so you learn more about certain characters, dungeons with fun boss battles, great enemy variety, and the worst thing about the game? Gotcha elements. Yeah, this game is a loot box system, but it's one of the better ones that I've seen because you can get through the whole game without spending money on it. But that being said, the game is a bit grindy at that point. Also, I have no opinion on the co-op. I have heard that it is really bad, so bleh. If you want to sink your teeth into a beautiful world full of fun character designs and exploration, then I'd recommend Genshin Impact, especially since it's free. You can get it on PC, PS4, and I believe mobile. I walked into the same shit, bro. I popped Empress and went to run around the corner. Left. That bitch with a Bucky. <laughs> One and and you guys are keep running into it. Damn what the it. fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get this one out of the way. Community equals toxic. All right, now to the actual game. I've never enjoyed Counter-Strike, mainly because I found the gunplay boring and I found nothing pleasing about the game in terms of presentation. But Valorant not only feels better to play, but it has different characters with different abilities that are pretty well balanced across the board. I just really dislike the blinding. Not that it's because it's a bad mechanic, it just annoys me when I have to deal with it. The little fanfare that plays when you get a kill, super satisfying, and the harsh dart sound that lands when you land shots in general just feels so good to, like, handle the weaponry in the game and just play it. I only have one complaint, and it's that the spread on some of the weapons is pretty bad. Like, it's, like, not really readable or controllable spread compared to other FPS games, but... Just like Genshin Impact, the game is free and it is fun. As long as you can handle toxicity, I'd recommend playing it. And it also helps that playing with friends is just really fun. This is on PC only, I think. So... This wasn't meant to be a pun, I swear. Crash Bandicoot 4 is finally out after over 20 years of nothing. And the Bandicoot came back with wild force. The platforming in this game feels fantastic and the level design is superbly fun. The characterization of Crash & Co is at its peak in this game, B besides Tana. A lot of people say that Cortex steals the show in the game, but I honestly think that Coco has quite a few good interactions in the game and honestly has some top-notch quips. I think those two <laughs> really steal the show. Crash is also very expressive. The whole crew is very expressive and very fun. The only problem I have with this game is how difficult it can be. To collect gems and flashback tapes to play more levels, it takes more effort on your eyesight, reflexes, and patience. Dying is inevitable, and when it happens, depending on your scenario, you'll feel distraught. 
but I think the game on its own in a design perspective is super fucking great and definitely worth a recommendation. Fuck you, I love this game. It's Poyo Poyo and Tetris combined, again. And it's still a dicking as hell and obscenely competitive. If you like Tetris, get this game. If you like Poyo Poyo, get this game. I'm not explaining anything extra. I don't think I need to. This game is just chaotic and insane puzzle fun. Fucking get it. God damn. This is a superb roguelike, probably the best in the genre. Hades is insanely fast paced, full of action, fantastic art, great performances, and fantastic music like holy fu- <laughs> At first, when I was playing this game, I thought it was like, oh, pretty fun. Then I unlocked more weapons and available upgrades, and after repeated playthroughs, this just, I just started thinking, holy shit, this is satisfying as hell. The upgrades actually feel extensive. The combat is always your fault when you fail, it doesn't feel unfair, the game style is appealing, and just everything about Hades progression feels fantastic. There are a couple of games and genres that I think define the genre as a whole. And Hades just became that for roguelikes, in my opinion. If you know me, you knew this was going to top it. This is my current favorite game of all time, and for justifiable reasons, fantastic customization of movesets for your personas, addictive turn-based combat, fantastic characters and writing, great performances, absolute banger music, more story that improves off of the base game with better dungeon designs than the base game, some graphical updates compared to the base game, more options to do on the side, everything positive about the base game, is improved in Royal and then some. The new additions to the plot and overall, the new content is just insane. It's some of the best writing that I've witnessed in mainstream media. And I am not kidding when I say that. The only gripe I have with this game is that it is too easy, but the gameplay and world was so addictive and attractive to me that I don't care. I think this game is legitimately fantastic. Persona 5 Royal, is my favorite game of all time and I don't see that changing for a while I have a lot of video games still to play so that could change just all I need to say, that's all I need to say um, Royal just improved every problem I had with the base game and then some Boy, we're done. I don't know if I'll be doing this in 2021 since I tried to play older games in my backlog over newer games, but I had a lot more newer games this year that I could play. So maybe I'll do a list based off of games that I finished in 2021 and not necessarily games that released in 2021. However, I don't know. I could still be picking up new releases in the coming year. I did that with Cyber Shadow and I'm doing that with Persona 5 Strikers. So who knows, I might pick up enough games to do another top 10. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please experience more video games because they can provide so much more than a distraction to your life. They can give off emotion, they can show you many different things, tell you many different things that movies can't make you feel involved in the current world that you're playing in. Just video games are a lot more magical than other pieces of media, and I think that's important. Thanks for watching, and as always, have yourself a great fucking year. Thanks again for watching this video, everybody, and I have one more announcement before we uh, end the video. 
My friend Bans McMe is the current chairman of the Band Together Charity Group, and we are going to run a charity live stream on April 16th starting at 5 p.m. EST and running until 5 to 6 p.m. EST on April 17th for the JED Foundation. Yeah, as you can already tell, I'm going to be a part of this charity live stream. The JED Foundation works on suicide prevention and mental health of teens and young adults. It will be a 24 plus hour charity live stream with over 10 different streamers hosting a variety of games. I will be one of the first ones streaming. I'm hosting Mega Man 2 Speedrun Race with Big Funny. So I hope all of you come by and watch that it'll be super fun this is a topic that really hits home for every single one of us that are streaming this and for many of you guys out there i bet it hits home as well for bands the chairman it's a very deep topic because of this charity stream is to honor their best friend whom they lost to suicide over 10 years ago anyways i hope you all come out and honor his memory with us we'll have fun while we do it go ahead and give the bands makes me channel a follow so we can stay up to date on the charity streams and be sure to give all of the streamers a follow after the charity stream is done because there's a lot of work being put into this uh again like it was a lot of coordination to get this going and it's going to be a lot of fun never forget to keep yourself healthy drink water eat food Make sure that you're golden, and keep keep on keeping on. Let, yeah, let's fucking go. Woo!